Hi and welcome to another OptiWave tutorial. In this quick video, I'll be explaining in depth the MATLAB code I wrote for the previous tutorial on the binary switch. I will also explain in detail the data structures that OptiSystem passes to MATLAB. Before we start looking at the code, I just want to be clear that this program is not modeling a physical device. The way I have written it, the switch will act instantaneously on an incident signal. Nevertheless, it allows me to demonstrate a simple yet interesting example of the MATLAB component. From a programming standpoint, the MATLAB component works in the same way as any function. OptiSystem will pass data structures corresponding to the input signals to MATLAB, which you can then perform any type of manipulation on. OptiSystem will then expect return data structures that will then correspond to the output signals. It's generally a good idea to start off your component with an initialization of the output port variables. These are the two lines I just highlighted. Running the simulation with just these two simple commands is a good way to confirm that the software is interworking correctly. These commands also serve to copy the data structure that OptiSystem expects. You'll notice that I copied the first input for both of the outputs rather than the second binary input. This is because different signal types will have slightly different data structures and information. The middle section of the code is really just an exercise in MATLAB programming, but I will briefly explain it. These two lines, which determine the length of the binary and optical signal, are needed so that the program will be able to calculate the samples per bit. Once we have the samples per bit, we can match the length of the binary sequence vector to the sampled optical signal vector. This will allow us to perform a type of binary AND operation on the time domain signal. Here I find the inverse of the binary sequence for calculating the signal at the second output port. And finally, I perform the AND operation on the input sampled data and save it directly to the output variables. Now I will just quickly show you how OptiSystem passes the signal data. We need access to the command window first. Double click the MATLAB component and check the load MATLAB option. The command window allows us to write in commands after the program has already run. Next we need to populate the workspace with variables, so let's run the simulation. It will run much faster since MATLAB is already open. Write the command workspace to bring up the workspace window so that we can view the variables. Let's take a look at input port 1, which is our optical signal. The data is stored as a MATLAB structure array. The struct gives information on the type of signal, how it is represented, sampled, parameterized, etc., and the channels it contains. The sample data structure array contains the complex amplitude data of the field as a function of time which are both stored as vectors. Lastly, let's look at how the binary sequence is stored differently. The binary sequence is stored like a digital signal might be. The structure also contains information about the bitrate. You can use this technique to investigate what the other signal types look like as stored data structures. I also suggest you look at the MATLAB documentation on structure arrays. Thanks for watching. 